Tube Nation. Whee! Welcome back. Before we start the video, I do want to say something. We're doing a massive sex toy giveaway in a few minutes, so just stay tuned for details. Let's get into the video. <laughs> Tube Nation. We are back finally. I know it's been like a month, but here we are. I just got my hair freshly dyed. Look at this. It's so shiny. It's so shiny. It feels so soft. Shout out to my girl Claire. She's the one that did it. Love Claire. I was seeing this other guy and then some crazy allegations came out about him and no not a good person <laughs> i was so annoyed because he was really good at hair but just not a good person but i found this girly claire she did way better than him anyways so let's fucking get it claire hey guys my laptop broke while i'm at my parents house awesome so i had to edit this on my mom's computer and she doesn't have the software that i have so <laughs> so that's why this video is edited just i don't know it's just kind of like podcast vibes nothing too crazy just podcast vibes so this video i'm just gonna do my makeup and i'm just gonna yeah i feel like there's so much to catch you guys up on also check out my shirt yeah if you guys watched my last video, you guys know that I have this weird hyperfixation on Caitlyn Clark right now. Honestly, not weird. It's not weird. If you don't have a hyperfixation on Caitlyn Clark right now, you're weird. So yeah, shout out Caitlyn Clark. I saw two of her games this week. We'll talk about that later. But basically, I just wanted to sit down, do my makeup, and talk to you guys about Coachella. <laughs> and my birthday i went back to oregon for a little bit and then i want to tell you the tea on me going to these games because so much happened like some crazy shit happened which you guys are probably like what sarah you went to a caitlin clark game yeah i did i went to one with christelle in la and then i went to vegas by myself the next day because i'm insane and some crazy shit went down in vegas so i wanted to talk about that so yeah, we're just gonna chat, do our makeup. So if you guys have makeup to do, do it with me or just watch me do mine. But before we get started, we do have a sponsor. So take it away, Sarah. Oh, hey, you guys, are you alone right now? Are you feeling a little silly and crazy? Well, you've come to the right person. My friends over at Belessa and I are literally sending out free vibrators and free gift cards, gift cards for vibrators, to everybody who signs up for my giveaway. And there's so many to choose from, baby. I'll show you my favorites. Belessa is a bi woman company for all things sexual wellness. And Belessa's mission is to empower everyone to embrace, to explore, and to celebrate their sexuality. Okay, these are my top three favorites, all right? This one is called the Pebble. It comes in a little charging case like this. It comes with a cord so you can charge your charging case. You just slip it in right there. And look at how cute she is. She's just a little pebble. She's just a little girl. The suction and the vibration for this one is controlled independently. It fits perfectly in your hand. It shapes with your hand so you won't lose grip. It won't slip out of your hands in the middle of you getting freaky. One size fits it's all hands. And there's no annoying pattern modes. She's consistent. She gets the job done and she's cute and pink. We love her. We love the pebble. But then you got the air vibe, okay? And like the name says, she is a vibe. Just look at her. She twists, she turns, she bends, she goes crazy. This one also comes with a charging case. Like I said, you just put it in there. And this one is indeed a vibe because it's dual stimulation. You got the G-spot and you got the clit at the same exact time. She can truly do it all and she gets the job done. It comes in the most discreet casing and it's waterproof. So if y'all are really freaky, you can get in the shower. I don't know what you guys like to do. Go into a waterfall. Ah, eh. okay, don't do it in public. That's illegal. And it's obviously rechargeable and it's silent, but deadly. So if you live with roommates or you're just afraid about the noise, I would go with this one. She's a sneaky fella. And then last but not least, this is the Demi wand. Just look at her. She's so cute. Comes with the case as well, comes with the cord. And this one is great for beginners. If you don't really know what you're doing, she will lead the way. But this is more for external use, great for beginners. There's five continuous vibration speeds on this one, so you're in control. It's made with silicone and it's waterproof as well, so go ahead and get freaky in the shower. I dare you. Out of all three of them, 
This one's probably my favorite. <laughs> After I just looked at this little girly again, I'm like, wait, yeah, missed you. I'll see you later. So yeah, guys, make sure you guys sign up for my giveaway. Just click the link in the description and get a free vibrator or a gift card for a vibrator. Go crazy, have fun. Thank you, Belessa, for doing this giveaway with me and let's get into the video. Okay, so I prepped my skin before I started recording. Nothing too crazy. I just toned it with this stuff. I don't know, Course X, AHA slash BHA clarifying treatment toner. Just put that on a little cotton pad, went crazy. And then same brand, I used this snail, snail mucus. It's snail something. It's just what the Koreans do. So whatever the Koreans doing, I'm gonna do it too. I trust them. And then I put some Cetaphil, who's Phil, right? Who the hell is Phil? I put Cetaphil on my face after that. And then I did some makeup forever. I need to get something else. I don't even know if this actually works. It's just the mist and fix. I just put this on. And then I used some of this Tarte Poreless. And honestly, I love this stuff. I haven't used this stuff since high school. I just kind of forgot about it, but I just picked some up the other day and I added it back to my makeup routine. And honestly, it helps a lot. It just shrinks your pores and it does it immediately. So we love it. For foundation, I'm gonna use Luminous Silk in Giorgio Armani, but these are so expensive. I don't know why. Well, I do know why they're really good, but I have to use these two colors because I have no idea what color I am. I just got a spray tan and some of it is like washing away. So I have to mix these two. A good dupe though is Born This Way. Yeah, yeah. Born this way, I don't have any. Or honestly, fit me, fit me is good too. Okay, sorry, my bad. Okay, I'm just gonna mix these. Still don't even know if this is my color, probably is not, but it's the closest thing I can find right now. <sighs> Let's get into it. Huh? You see what I'm saying? Kind of perfect. I just found these random colors in my ca cabinet. I just found these random colors in my makeup drawer and they work, I think. Maybe it's a little too dark. Okay, the Coachella video, Coachella in general. Let's talk about it. A lot of you guys are just hitting me up all the time being like, where's the Coachella video? I get it. It's already June. Where is it? So here's the thing. This Coachella was very different for me. This is the first Coachella that I didn't camp. I didn't car camp and I stayed in a house both weekends, okay? And the first house that we stayed in the first weekend, we were staying with a bunch of people. I didn't know a lot of the people. And when I'm around a lot of people that I don't really know, I just clam up and I just never want to take my phone out and record things. I just didn't record a lot, okay? And a lot of stuff happened weekend one and we were just not even with the people we were staying with we were with other people that it's just not it wasn't chill to vlog you know what i'm saying i barely vlogged anything weekend one and i was pretty upset about that i was really in my head just being like oh my god sarah everyone's gonna be looking forward to this like everybody loves your coachella videos and i love them too because we weren't car camping there wasn't anything really like exciting to fit i don't know and also this was the first year where i wasn't hyped on the lineup lana del rey was fantastic so was tyler the creator but weekend one since we were with people we didn't see a lot of sets honestly we kind I just relied more on going to parties the first weekend which was super weird because usually I just don't give a fuck but I just really wanted to experience that part of Coachella like the after parties and stuff because I just never really did and were they that fun not really <laughs> but I'm glad that I got to experience it. By the end of weekend one, me and Christelle were like, damn, we didn't really get to see anyone that we wanted to see. I don't really have a lot of things to share. So then me, Christelle and Caitlin were like, okay, let's come back weekend two and we're gonna dedicate weekend two to like having a better experience. <laughs> oh, okay, so then I'm gonna take this and just kind of spray in between. So then we go back to weekend two. I don't know why me and Christelle didn't car camp. We honestly should have. Okay, I'm also gonna use NARS. I only have the mini version. This is in macadamia. And before you bitches clock me for using way too much concealer, I know, just let me be me and let me do my thing. Thanks. Um, 
So yeah, anyway, weekend two, we stayed with our other friends and you know, just nothing that crazy happened. Again, we just went to some sets, had some fun, no drama, no tea. Actually, there is some tea. The first person that I saw on weekend two was D <laughs> from my cruise vlog. Um, the person that you guys are relentlessly shipping me with, which is funny and cute and I get it. We had a great time on the cruise, he was cool, but like, you know, he just had no idea what was going to happen from that video. And it's not your guys' fault. I'm the one that put his face in the video, but he was just very overwhelmed. <laughs> He was just very overwhelmed by how many people were in his DMs talking about me and you know, and I did tell him that I was vlogging and he was down. But you know, I shared a lot of information in those videos <laughs> that he was just not expecting. So we didn't have an argument about it, but I just didn't really run it by him before I uploaded the video. I didn't really run it by him that I would be putting pictures of us kissing and stuff. He was just like so confused. He was just like, oh my God, I didn't know you were a story time YouTuber. I didn't know you're gonna be like giving all the tea, you know? He was just so shook. He was just like, um, I kind of wish that I knew <laughs> that you were gonna be sharing all that. And I was like, oh my God, totally. And he was like, I'm not mad. I just, it's just kind of like a consent thing. And I totally get that. If I met someone on a cruise and we had such an amazing intimate time, and then I hear that they're online like speaking in detail about our time together, I would have been like, what the fuck? And then all of their fans are in my DMs being like, ah! it's just a, it's just a shock, you know? and I could have warned him, I could have had him review the video, but I didn't. We're still friends, we're still cool, but he was really wanting to like talk to me about it, <laughs> which I so get, so get. And here I am talking about it on the internet yet again. He was the first person that I ran into at Coachella. And when I saw him, I was like, oh shit. I was the one that just kind of like broke the tension and we sat and we had a really long conversation. He was really cool, really nice. He was just expressing like, hey, next time you like make a video or I'm in your videos, I would just love to review it. And I'm like, totally. Cause he like works with kids and stuff. And I just was not considering that. So. I felt really, really bad. But we had a great conversation, but my heart did skip a beat when I saw D. I was like, oh my God. But no, we're cool now. We're cool now. We had a little tiff, but once we talked about it in person, I think it's all, it's all good. It's all good. We're still friends and he's amazing. But besides that, oh, we ran into Caitlyn's crew's boyfriend too. Um, <laughs> Brian, <laughs> we thought that he hated us. After our video about him, we thought that he hated us. Oh my God, I kind of ripped him a new one. I kind of just spilled the tea, put his face in the videos. You can easily find him, but he was super nice. <laughs> Wasn't mad at us. He gave us a huge hug. Obviously he saw the videos, but he thought that they were funny. So I'm like, what? Because the comment section was pretty brutal. That was hilarious. Just running into both of our cruise boyfriends at Coachella and we're kind of just deer in headlights being like, Sorry about that. But Brian was weirdly really chill about it. Thought it was hilarious. Wanted to make plans to hang out. I'm like, what, Brian? Okay. And then Brian also explained to us in person his weird behavior and it was all making sense. So it was good. <laughs> We like really cleared a lot of things up with our cruise boyfriends and a lot of miscommunication stuff. That was like the only thing. So as I was starting to edit the Coachella videos, I was just having a really hard time trying to put something together that would make sense to you guys instead of just like random clips just running around because nothing is cohesive. And also like me making a story time about it, like there's not really a story. So I was just really in my head. So this is me telling you guys, hey, I don't really have a good Coachella video this year. And if you guys don't mind, can I not post one since it's already in June? But if you guys really want me to whip up something, I can, but it's just like, it's just, I don't know. Just let me know in the comments. And I know you guys just don't care. You guys just wanna like see whatever, but I'm telling you, there's just, it wasn't like last year. It wasn't like the year before. That's kind of the tea on that. I just wanted to ask the girlies first.
first because I don't know. That's why it's been taking me so long and that's why I just kind of stopped because I just felt really uninspired editing it and I just wanted to check in with you guys first. Oh, also this is Fenty Beauty Contour Stick in Truffle. I never really was a liquid contour girly, but this stuff really rocks. And then just kind of blend it in with a brush like this. I don't even know if you're supposed to use a brush like this, but I use it just with like a sharp edge and then I just kind of go up. So yeah. Oh, also I'm using Laura Mercier Translucent Honey. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna talk about is my birthday. <laughs> my birthday was right after Coachella too. I've just been really stressing about my birthday this year. It's weird because I've been really stressed about it, but then at the same time, like really not stressing about it only because it was my 27th birthday. And I've just been reflecting a lot. When I hit 26, I was like, oh my God, I'm in my late 20s. And that really was fucking me up because it's just weird. It's just weird to enter your late 20s in general. But then I just kind of got used to that. And so when 27 was approaching, I wasn't as freaked out. Oh, also I'm using Fenty Beauty. I don't know what color this is. Private Island 3, just to go over my contour. Okay. I wasn't as freaked out, but also I'm just like, oh my God, I'm turning 27. I know I'm already in my late twenties, so I'm not as affected by that. It's just like 27, like I'm close to 30. And also not to make things dark, but 27 is the age where a lot of like dark things have happened with artists and creative people. And I was just really in my head about that. I'm not, I'm fine, you guys, like nothing bad. Like I'm not, I'm good. But you can't help but think about that though. Like why 27? Why 27? And so that was just kind of looming in my head. I want it to be a good year and a peaceful year. I just want to be in a really good headspace, and I am, but y'all know what I mean. It was just my anxiety. Also with the whole Saturn return thing, my sister was talking to me about it because my sister's older than me. She's turning 30 and her Saturn returned and she had the craziest three years of her life right when she hit 27 and that's just what happens. So I think that I was just so like, <sighs> what crazy shit is the universe going to try to tell me? What crazy shit is the universe going to force me to see and tell me and go through for me to fucking get it? You know, I don't know. I've just been like putting a lot of things off the past few years. And I've just heard that when you hit 27, just everything's gonna come to light. It's gonna force you to be uncomfortable. It's gonna force you to really like take a step back and figure out what you need and what you want and like what the universe wants for you. And it's gonna show you in some pretty harsh ways. So you get it, okay? So instead of fearing that and being nervous for those lessons and those changes, I'm trying to embrace it. And I think that I've been doing a lot better at that. Therapy has been helping a lot. Shout out Cheryl, I freaking love you. But I don't know, I've just been really, really nervous about turning 27. But then once I turn 27, I feel this crazy peace. I think it was just the buildup, you know? Saturn, get away from me, Saturn. I'm trying my best. I don't need to be reminded what I need to be doing, but Saturn's been pretty chill for now. I thought that 25 was gonna be my quarter life crisis. No girl, it's 27. I've just been thinking a lot about my priorities. I've just been putting myself first a lot. I've just been really focused on what is actually important, right? Ego aside, what are the things that I really want to mend? And like, what relationships do I really wanna work on? All that stuff. And I'll get into that a little bit more when I talk about going back to Oregon. Woo! Okay, I think I kind of slayed. I was also using Sephora bronzed in the color six Ibiza. And I'm going to Ibiza. Ooh! I'm going to Ibiza in a few weeks. That's another thing. Oh my God, there's just so many things happening. Oh my God, I'm doing so well with reminding you guys what I'm doing. This is great. This is progress. I'm gonna do blush. So this is Anastasia Beverly Hills blush. It's completely disturbing and cracked and awful, but this is in blush trio. Oh my God, and I'm spilling everywhere. And then I also mix it with Laura Mercier in rose. Okay, so I'd take my little brush. Oh my God. And I do this. And then I tap a little bit of this, even though it's broken. And then I mix it with this. Okay. And I just started learning how to do blush. So I don't really know where to put it. I just kind of put it right here. And then I just kind of go out. 
I don't really like liquid blush on me. I think it's just too much and I always do it wrong. I just don't know how to do it. I'm starting with the powder, okay? You don't have to go too crazy. You don't want to look like you have a rash. Just a little sprinkle. Like I'm a little embarrassed, but not really. You can't really tell if you hurt my feelings or not. Except for when I get embarrassed, like actually deeply humiliated, shook to my core, bone chillingly embarrassed, my entire face, bright red, just flushes. Doesn't even matter how much makeup or blush I have. You'll know, but we only wanna look a little bit embarrassed. Like I'm shy. Okay, cute. And sometimes I go a little bit too hard, so I just blend it out a little bit. Now I'm gonna take my Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer. I'm gonna prime my little eyelids. I don't even really know if this helps. I think it does. I don't know. <laughs> I really couldn't tell you. I just use it anyway. Maybe it's a placebo thing. I always get creases on my eyelids no matter what, especially when I'm outside in the sun. I don't know why. My eyes are just really sensitive and they get really watery. My makeup and like my eyeliner and I kind of have small eyelids and it just creases at the top and there's always a black line. I always get my makeup smudged in the corners. So I think that this helps. I'm pretty sure it does because it hasn't been happening as much when I put this stuff on. And then I also put my NARS concealer up here just for a nice little base. Okay, I'm gonna tell you guys what eyeshadow I'm doing before I start going crazy with it because this shit takes me forever and then I'll continue talking. So I first go in with some Makeup by Mario. This is Master Mattes. And then I just go in with these shades first just to kind of get a little baseline going. And then I kind of branch out into the browns on the outward parts. And then I take Huda, Huda, I don't know, Huda Beauty empowered little hoodie. <laughs> and then I go in with this color just to kind of go over it. And then I use this brown burgundy color towards the end. And because I just dyed my hair darker and I'm feeling dark and emo, I'm gonna do a more dark makeup look, like a dark going out. This is what I usually do when I go out, when I like wanna make a statement. You know, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing while I'm talking. Okay, so my birthday was really, really freaking great this year. My friends made it so special. We did a little road trip to San Diego and we saw Justin Timberlake. Like he performed on my birthday. Justin Timberlake. Ew. Ugh. Ooh. Oh my God. Um, yeah, Justin Timberlake had a show on my birthday. Wait, not San Diego, San Jose. What am I talking about? San Jose. And so we did a little road trip to San Jose. We've never been there before. We got there the night before my birthday. We checked into the little Airbnb. The Airbnb was so cute. It was this little apartment right next to the theater where we were gonna see JT. So it was literally walking distance. Perfect, okay. When we got there, we were like, okay, we have to go out because I'm turning 27 at midnight. Like we gotta do something. It was also like a Tuesday. <laughs> It was like a Tuesday and San Jose isn't really that popping or maybe it is Maybe it is but like a lot of the places close pretty early besides this one Irish pub Or there was like a few places, but this one Irish pub looked very promising and it was karaoke night What? And I was like, yeah, we absolutely need to go to karaoke night at this Irish pub. Are you kidding me? We hobble on over to karaoke night it's this small little pub, very cute, but it was popping. It was pretty popping. It was like 10.30. Christelle and Caitlin were like, Sarah, you have to do karaoke. And I don't know if it's the new meds. Like, I don't really know, but in my bones, I was like, yeah, I should do karaoke. I really don't like being center. Well, I do love being center of attention, but only when <laughs> I have the right to. So like when it's my birthday, it's my fucking birthday. And I'll tell everybody, you know? But on the day to day, like I'm not gonna do karaoke. But I don't know, now, why not? And I think turning 27, I'm like, I have one life to live. Who gives a shit? Who gives an absolute shit if I'm doing karaoke or not, all right? Like, why am I taking this so seriously? This isn't American Idol. This is not X Factor. This is an Irish pub in the middle of San Jose. I think I'll be good. 
So I was like, yeah, dude, I'll do some karaoke. So I told the guy to sign me up right at like 11.58, right when it turns my birthday. And so we put me on the list. I got a little faded. I got some drinks in me, but I didn't want to get too turned because I didn't want to be a mess while I'm, while I'm delivering my message to the people. So I took it slow. We're making friends. And honestly, it's pretty fucking lit. At like 11.30, so many people started piling into this Irish pub because there was another Justin Timberlake concert that night. So he was doing two nights in San Jose. So everyone went there after the show was over. So I was like, oh my God, I have an audience. And then I started to get a little nervous because I'm like, oh shit, there's so many people in this Irish pub and I'm going on soon. This is my big break. What if Dr. Dre is in the crowd? What if Simon Cowell's in the crowd? Then it hits 11.55 and I'm starting to feel the butterflies. I'm like, oh my God, I can't turn back. My birthday's in five minutes. I'm going up there. Whether I like it or not, like I'm going up there. I cannot chicken out. I just have to do it. And then the guy calls me up, announces that it's my birthday. I was like, it's my fucking birthday on the mic. Caitlin recorded the whole thing. I'll insert it, but guys, The crowd was not loving me. The crowd was not having it, <laughs> like at all. <laughs> I chose a Nickelback song. I was trying to think of a song that everyone could just sing along to. Cause when you're doing karaoke, you want everybody to join in. So it's like a group fun vibe. So I thought that Photograph would obviously be a vibe. Um, nope, everybody hated that. No one was feeling me. And I was up there singing my heart out. I was trying to get everybody to join in and sing with me, but San Jose was not, not feeling it. It's in the bathroom, I can play baseball in. Black hair in the bedroom, in it. Hey, 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 hey. I want a new tool, but full of all the time. And all about it and more than mine. After I was done, I didn't even feel anxious. I was just like, whatever, y'all suck. Some people were feeling it. Some people were trying to like make me feel better because everybody was just sitting there like this. Nickelback, really? Like, shut up. Um, so when I was done, I could have completely started crying about it. <laughs> but I honestly just was like, you guys are projecting. This is you guys. You guys aren't fun, whatever. I totally could have went to the bathroom and cried. And Caitlin was even like, Sarah, let's go get a shot. Nobody gets it, girl. You did great. And I was like, okay, period. And so we stayed there. We drank a little bit more. We're talking to people. People are buying me drinks because it's my birthday. And I was reminding everybody that it was my birthday. So the bar closed at two and then around like 1.30, an hour and a half after my set, the DJ guy who was controlling the karaoke booth, he called me up again. And he was like, is the birthday girl still here? Is the birthday girl still in the building? And I'm like, yes. Hello, sir. I was in the very back. I'm like, are you talking to me? And he called me back up on stage and he wanted me to perform again. I was like, you know what? You're correct, Gary. I need to redeem myself. All right, we'll get this started for Sarah. <laughs> Let's go. I need to pick a song that like everybody can groove to. Photograph by Nickelback was maybe too emotional. Maybe it struck a chord with a lot of you people and you guys just were too in your feelings. I don't know. So I was like, I have to do something fun and funky. So I get up there and I choose Bruno Mars, 24 karat magic. I'm like, this will get the people going. And it did. And guys, I rocked the freaking house down. I rocked the house down. Guess who's back again? I then I know. I was doing crowd work, you know.
people were into it. And I met some girlies there, like some girlies that watch my YouTube videos and they were into it, they were hyping me up, like that was the vibe. If you guys are ever stuck on a song for karaoke, 24 karat magic. I had to learn that the hard way. Don't do Nickelback, because people are haters, dude. And I should have known that. The Nickelback hate, it's very real. It's very unfortunate. Some people just are never gonna understand and I just had to accept that. So yeah, do 24 karat magic because everybody knows that song and everybody loves Bruno Mars, okay? Name one person that doesn't like Bruno Mars. Exactly. So then after that, the Irish pub closed and I took a bunch of pictures with the security guards. I don't know, they were cool. I really appreciate them. They're out here monitoring us. They're keeping us safe. They're doing their thing. And no one really gives them enough credit. You just have to stand around and listen to people sing Bruno Mars all night. No one gives them any love. So of course I had to give the security guards some love, give them a few fist bumps. And then we went home. But honestly, we were so turned, like me, especially Caitlin. Caitlin got very turned. I was not expecting that. I haven't seen Caitlyn that turned in so long. Like even during the cruise, I haven't seen her that turned. But I was really happy because I'm like, yes, it's my fucking birthday. We get home, we all kind of black out. I guess we had a very emotional conversation. This is what Christelle said. I don't really remember this, but we all had an emotional conversation. We're all like crying about shit. I don't know. But I wake up the next morning and it's my freaking birthday. And we don't really know what to do during the day in San Jose, that rhymed. But since we're kind of in our golf era, I don't even know if I've talked to y'all about that, but I've been playing golf recently. I've just been trying to get better at it. This is like a little hobby to do. Cheryl, my therapist wants me to do more things outside, so. We're trying to do golf, like actual golf, you know? But we saw that there was a Top Golf, so that's what I wanted to do on my birthday. So we went to Top Golf, and it was cute, it was fun. We were all pretty hungover. We were trying our best, but you guys, <laughs> the music that was playing in this Top Golf was actually excruciating. The playlist at the San Jose Top Golf is literally the worst shit I've ever heard in my life. I don't even know how to describe the genre. And also, I guess that they get so many complaints about it because we asked our server, we we're like, hey, can we like change the station? They're like, no, it's like a corporate playlist. Trust me, girl, like I've tried. Like everybody complains. Oh, also I'm using Too Faced, the natural nudes, and I'm just using these shimmery colors. This one and this one, I'm mixing that and I'm doing the corners up top and then down below. But yeah, the music was fucking awful. It would keep changing from like horrible, like I like country sometimes, but it was like terrible country to like Christian rock, to like Imagine Dragons. It just was not what I wanna hear when I'm trying to golf and be competitive. And then it would play like One Republic, too late to apologize, like what? while we're top golfing. It was just like very slow, sad songs. I'm like, guys, whoever made this corporate playlist needs to be fired. The fact that they're getting complaints about that, she was like, no, you guys are like my seventh complaint this hour. And we were like, okay, totally. So like do something about it because we're already hung over. <laughs> we're listening to someone's breakup playlist who works for you. It was just all sad. I just broke up with my girlfriend type vibes. It was so weird. I'm like, just put on the black eyed peas or something. Like truly anything but this, anything but Imagine Dragons. Not even the good Imagine Dragons. But they have some okay songs I can tolerate, but no, it was like the weird, sad Imagine Dragons. Like guys, I don't wanna be imagining dragons. It was just super crazy vibes. Like honestly, when we left Top Golf, we were like, thank God. Cause you know, music can really dictate the energy in an environment. And that energy was just so insane. Like we just did not know what to do with ourselves. But then we came home and then we got ready for Justin Timberlake and we had so much fun at the concert. Concert. Justin's show was so good. The visuals, the choreo, like everything about JT's show, so good. Like JT is back, bitch. <laughs>
and his new album is so good. If you guys haven't heard it, bruh. Listen to No Angels by JT. Listen to Fucking Up the Disco. Listen to Play, all on his new album. So good. The visuals are crazy. JT was literally in a harness at the end of the show and he was like slanted over the crowd and he was like looking over the crowd. You know that move that MJ does where he's like slanted on his toes? That was what <laughs> JT was going for. But he had a harness on and he was over the entire crowd. It was so good. But yeah, that was really fun. And then we went back out that night, but we went to a different place. We didn't go to the Irish pub. We went to this other place right across the street, right around the corner from this Irish Irish pub. Oh my god, the security guy was so hot. And me and him were flirting. I was thinking about taking him back to the Airbnb, but nah. I just didn't want to have to worry about that, you know? I just, that was just not my vibe. My vibe was just flirting with him. That's all I had the energy to do. But that was still really fun because he was really cute and funny. And then this other guy came up to me and Caitlin and was flirting with us. Well, he was flirting with me at first, but I was just not. And Christelle was somewhere, I think she was getting a drink, so he was flirting with me and I was like, you're not my type, brother. So I'm just gonna friend zone you very hard right now, but love ya. He was super nice. I was more into the security guard, so get away from me. But then once Christelle came back, he was flirting with Christelle and I was like, yes, oh my God, period. They were vibing heavily. And then I had to do a little photo shoot outside. I don't really know how I was able to do this. My inner gymnast came out and I started hanging upside down from the ceiling outside. Sometimes I think that I'm such a weak bitch, but then I pull shit like that off and I'm like, I could fight Conor McGregor if I really wanted to. Like if I was really juiced up enough, I feel like I could get a few punches in because I don't know where this strength comes from. And I just do like the craziest acrobatic things that I can't even explain. It's like all adrenaline, it's all vibes. Um, so yeah, I was just flipping around. And then I had to take pictures with the security guard and the guy that Christelle was flirting with, because why not? I think I was just really annoyed because I was not getting attention <laughs> all night after the Justin Timberlake show, because also it's like a Wednesday and nobody's really out. There's not a lot of people at the bars. It's my birthday. I had a sash on. I had my little birthday crown on and nobody was giving me attention. Like, where is everybody? So when we went to that bar and that security guard was flirting with me and that other guy was kind of flirting with me, but flirting more with Christelle, thank God. I was like, all right, I need a picture. It's my birthday. Okay, I'm putting this shimmery stuff in the corners. And because I told you guys I wanted to do more of an emo vibe on my waterline under here, I'm gonna use this dark burgundy color. And then I'm gonna go over it again with this brown and black. Just wait. I promise. It'll look good, I swear. I promise. So yeah, my birthday weekend was a success. Justin Timberlake did not, actually he did notice me. He did notice me during the show. There was a moment where he was singing my favorite freaking song. We were really close by the way, like literally up his nose. He was singing my favorite song until the end of time. Cause if your love was all I had in this life, you know it. So he was singing that on the piano and he was right in front of me. And I just really wanted him to notice me. It's my freaking birthday. And you know that part in the song, kind of towards the end, where he goes, this one's for the lovers. If you're out there, let me hear you say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're supposed to go, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was excited. And so when he went, this one's for the lovers. When you're out there, let me hear you say, yeah, 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 points. I went, yeah like screeching like a pig. I was screeching like a pig. And he literally like looked at the crowd and he was like, what the fuck was that? And he obviously had to like repeat that. And he goes, this one's for love. If you have that, let me see you say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, like, oh my God, my voice was shot. And then that's when he saw me. And then he started giggling because he's like, what the fuck is this bitch on? Why does she sound like a seagull? And that obviously repeats a few more times and it was just the same vibe. He just like kept giggling at me. And I'm like, I'll take it. 
He didn't say happy birthday, but he giggled at me. I'll take it. It's my freaking birthday. Um, so yeah, my birthday was great. And I was really excited because I was gonna go home to Oregon a few days later because my best friend, Katie, you guys know her, Katie's house. Katie has a son. I've talked about her son a few times. It's her firstborn and he is the love of my life. Me and him are both Taurus icons. He is my little Taurus nephew. We are literally the same person. I just get him, okay? He is just just my spirit animal especially now or he just turned four and he can talk now like he has a personality and he's so funny i just haven't seen little jordan in so long and they were having a little birthday party for him so of course i went happy birthday to you one of those things that I just really needed for my soul. Katie also just had another baby and she is the cutest little peanut. Oh my God. She's only a few months old. Her name is little Gigi. And I was meeting Gigi for the first time. And like, I don't know, my soul just really needed that. Just being around Katie and her family and celebrating little Jordan and also celebrating my birthday and meeting Katie's daughter for the first time. It was just so wholesome. And also just being with my parents. I've been doing a lot of therapy recently about like, you know, focusing on the relationships that are really important to me and kind of going deep into why some of my relationships aren't working and actually getting really vulnerable with myself and honest with myself about like, if some of what's not working in my relationships are me, <laughs> like, how much is it me and how much is it the other person, right? And that's really hard to come to terms with, especially your whole life if you think that it's just the other person the whole time. Me and my mom have always just butted heads in middle school and high school. And I think that like I've held a lot of resentment. Me and her relationship has been so much better, but still like I think sometimes I'm not able to fully let go and be in the moment when I'm home. I had to do a lot of work on myself, especially this past year on how to try to figure out what I can do individually to make my relationship with her stronger and better because on her end, she does a lot and she tries really hard, but I just realized that like I wasn't putting in that same effort and I just really wanted to work on that. This was the first time where I was home. I was noticing my triggers and being able to clock my triggers in the moment and not letting that escalate or turn into a fight like I was able to self-regulate able to actually have mature conversations instead of getting triggered and like shutting down you know because that's what I used to do all the time like I never knew how to use my words whenever I was upset, especially around my mom. Like I just always thought that she was attacking me and I would just always shut down and I just always just kind of pushed her away in a sense. And this was the first time where like I was catching myself shutting down or when I would want to shut down and just kind of like regulate it in a different way where no fights were started. Me and my mom didn't fight once. And it's so tricky with daughter and mother relationships because it is very easy to trigger each other. That's a relationship that's very difficult sometimes. I'm still trying to figure out why that is, but I have been doing so much work on to like not let some of the things that she says affect me and instead just like talk about it and go about it in a more constructive way. I just always shut down because that was my default my entire life. Like I just always shut down and just never communicated. So this was the first time where I had such a great time with my parents. And I know that that sounds so like, really Sarah? But that's a huge deal for me. I go through these phases where like, I get really homesick and I want to go home, but I don't want to go home because I don't want to end up fighting with my mom about something and being triggered about something. It's just been always really hard for me to navigate that. And now that my mom has done some work on herself and I have too, like we are better than ever. We went shopping. We went to Ulta together. Like we just had such a great time. Yes. Me and my mom can be friends. I'm actually having a great time with my mom. I had a great time with my dad too. As you guys know, I'm really into basketball right now. What? 
not men's basketball, women's basketball. Okay, also I'm using Rare Beauty Eyeliner. This is the Liquid Perfect Strokes Matte Liquid Liner. So what I do is I like go under my waterline and then I go on top of the waterline and then I do just like a nice little wing. And it's really hard to master, but I cannot multitask and talk while I do this. So I'm just gonna do this off camera. I'll be right back. I know I got a bag of money Sitting on over 20,000 square feet We ain't gotta go nowhere tonight Cause I am the party I am over and over again Yeah, I am the party I am the party so true, Watson. Speaking of, I'm gonna link my Spotify in the description. Follow me. I have a bunch of fun little playlists. And if you follow me on Spotify, you can see what I'm listening to on the little sidebar. That's fun. Let's get silly. That song's so good. That song's called I Am The Party by Usher. And whenever like I'm in an insecure mood or I'm about to go out and I'm nervous or the social anxiety is hitting right before I go out, I just turn on I Am The Party by Usher. And I swear it really helps. It's such a good mantra. <laughs> Like truly, I am the party. I am. And he just repeats that over and over again. Yeah. It seriously helps a lot. Cause like, so true. What the fuck am I tweaking about? So for lashes, I'm using Lily Lash in Mykonos. Okay. And these are a little bold and crazy, but I love them. This is my like going out lash. Okay, these lashes are kind of wonky because I've used them so many times. Um, Also my lash glue, this is the best lash glue ever. It's Ilure London 18 hour lash. This shit rocks. And it truly is 18 hours long. Where are my tweezers? What was I talking about? Oh, organ, yeah. Great vibes. And me and my dad have been bonding over basketball, which is awesome. It's always fun when you can find another thing to bond with your dad about. A few months ago, it was football because I randomly started getting into football because of Travis Kelsey. I'm not even a Swifty, but I just got entranced into that lore. But now that football season's over, I'm like, okay, now what? And then I found out about Caitlin Clark and I was like, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Absolutely. And so I went down a little rabbit hole with women's basketball. That was just consuming my life for a little bit. A little bit of a hyperfixation, a little bit of an obsession. But it's always fun when you just find something new that you're passionate about. You just want to learn all about it, you know? And that's what I was doing. I just needed to know everything about women's basketball. I needed to know all the lore. I needed to know the beef, like the Angel Reese tea. I needed to learn about like Paige Becker's tea. I needed to learn about Caitlin Clark tea, duh. That's where I started. But like, there's just so much tea and it's so fun. And I just got super enthralled by it. I've just been following it very closely now I watch every game and I really got my dad into it when I was home in Oregon me and him were watching Caitlin's first ever professional basketball game together like I got to watch that with my dad they did awful <laughs> Caitlin's team was awful but it was still really cool to watch that with my dad like he does know about Caitlin Clark and all of that shit like he knows how great she is but he's never really been super invested in women's basketball but now he is because of me and I made him watch the documentary. There's a documentary called Full Court Press and it came out while I was in Oregon and it's all about like Caitlin Clark and two other players, like their journey during March Madness. I got to watch that with my dad and my dad just really understood and loved it. And now me and my dad text all the time about basketball and he's like sending me the schedule. He's like, are you watching today? And I'm like, yeah, dad, are you watching today? and we just text each other about the games. And it's been really great. And it's just taken our relationship to another level as well. And so this is like the first time I'm telling y'all in so long where I had such a great time with my parents and I started crying before my flight home. Like I was sobbing. I'm like, you guys, I had so much fun with you. Like, <laughs> wow, 
I don't want to leave. And they were like, Sarah, where is this coming from? As they're like holding me and I'm like, I don't know. I think I'm just healing as a person, but you guys are actually like really dope. <laughs> and I love hanging out with you guys. So that was really cool. That was a breakthrough moment <laughs> for sure. I told Cheryl, my therapist, and she was so happy. She was about to cry because we've been working on that for almost a year now. And so I had a great breakthrough. A lot of you guys are like, Sarah, why don't you move back to Oregon if you miss it so much? It's like, I do miss it, but I miss it in doses, you know? I love being in LA because there's so much happening here and I just feel like I'm meant to be here at this point in my life, especially in my 20s. Like, I love being in LA. I feel like if I wasn't in LA right now, I would just have FOMO constantly just because it's just so fun here. I have the time of my life, but it's always nice to just go home and be back with the day ones, you know? Okay, I'm putting this lash on now. And I'm going back to Oregon in a few days. Katie, her little sister, Gabby, is graduating high school. What the fuck? Like y'all don't understand. I was there when she was born. Katie brought her in for show and tell right when she was born, like swaddled up in a blankie. And I watched that little bitch. I watched her grow up, go through every phase. And now she's graduating high school. What? So now I'm going back to Oregon in a few days for her graduation. I'm gonna be an emotional wreck. I can't handle it. That's my little sister. And then on Monday I'm coming home and then I have to pack and then I'm going to Ireland. What? Also I'm using Brow Wiz in soft brown for my eyebrows. I'm going to Ireland with Caitlin's family. They're having like a family trip, like a family reunion because Caitlin is super Irish. So she has family there. I've just been going on all these family trips with my besties. Like I just went to Peru with Christelle's family. Now I'm going to Ireland with Caitlin's family. Like I'm doing all the family trips and I'm so excited to see Caitlin's stomping grounds. <laughs> That's gonna be so fun and I'm going to vlog that, okay? Cause that's gonna be crazy. And then after that, we're going to Amsterdam. Guys, what are you talking about? We're going to Amsterdam and then we're going to Ibiza. Literally right after that. So that's what June is gonna be looking like. And that's why I was talking about this Coachella video because I'm like, guys, you have no idea what's about to hit you. I'm going to Dublin and then Amsterdam and then Ibiza back to back. Like that video is gonna be fucking insane. And I would rather focus on making sure that that's good instead of posting a Coachella video that I just don't really care about. Okay, they're sisters, they're not twins. I kind of slayed, okay. And then the final touches. See, I always go back and forth about this because sometimes I think that I look so much better without bottom mascara on. But then I'm like, wait, I'm gonna put bottom mascara on. And then I'm like, wait, I look so much better with bottom mascara on. I want you guys to tell me, please be honest, because I can't figure it out. I do both and I switch it up, but this is what I look like without it, okay? And now I'm gonna put some bottom mascara on. You guys always come through with the best opinion. And I trust you guys. Okay, see, like I can't tell cause it kind of slays. Like what looks better? I can't ever decide. I feel like it just kind of makes my eyes look more open, but is it too much? I don't know. I like it. Final touch. Highlighter, hey. <laughs> this is why I always use Anastasia highlighting kit. I need to get a new palette so bad. I'm scraping, but I would rather scrape the edges of this than get a new one cause I'm cheap. I just put it right there. Mm-hmm. 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 And then I'm gonna take a tiny brush, scrape around the same, and then do my brow bone. This really just, this just solidifies the look, makes everything fall into place. And then I take, this is my favorite lipstick, it is Hideaway Matte by Urban Decay. Okay. Okay. I really like this color with my skin tone. There you go. And then when I'm feeling extra crazy, I take my Too Faced Lip Injection Plumping Gloss and put it on top. 
All right, guys, there you have it. Thank you for watching this incredibly long makeup tutorial <laughs> where I yap away. I just feel like I haven't updated you guys on my life. There's so much that's been happening. Thank you guys for listening. I just really just wanted to talk to you guys and let you know where my head's at. Wanting to get your guys' opinion on the Coachella shit. Do we care? Can we move on? And also just wanted to let you guys know that I'm going to Europe and I'm so excited for that. You guys are going to see some crazy adventures. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, Sarah Basque, uh, uh. Follow me on Instagram so you can keep up with the Europe bullshit because that's happening very soon. I have another video I'm going to upload probably like in a week because I need to tell you guys about what happened at this basketball game. I kind of alluded to it at the beginning of the video, like some shit went down and it it's just so funny. So I'm going to make another video in like a week so make sure you guys are subscribed so you don't miss that and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it if you like the finished product let me see it let me see those likes come on queens thank you guys for watching have an amazing day bye also happy pride it's june tomorrow yeah happy pride happy pride guys love you bye